right, here we go. Overdrive off and running TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker up on TSN 4. Brian Azio, Doug Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. Going on. Mail it in Thursday today. This yes. is a big one. We've got a lot to get to in the next three hours. It is opening day around baseball. We're very excited about that. A lot of juice there. You got the Leafs in action tonight. You have the Raptors embarrassing themselves on a daily basis. There's a lot going on. That was your tweet alone. Oh, you got it's outrageous to watch that team play. <laughs> like it's it's beyond a tank. It's a tanking tank. Like with injuries. With injuries, naturally. Right. Like Scotty's legitimately injured in Pirtle. Yeah. I, I think they just go to RJ and quickly and say, don't play anymore. Yeah. You're out. Because the problem is Memphis keeps losing too. They lost last night as well. Right. The Raptors are only a game up on Memphis yeah. to end up with that sixth spot. And it's top six protected that Pirtle deal. Right. So they're tanking. You might as well lose out. But it's one thing to lose. They lost by 44 last night. Is that an all-time high? I That's I... the highest ever at home. They've never lost. They've yeah. lost by more on the road, I think. <laughs> on the road, that's child's play. But they had set their own record earlier this month. They lost by 40-plus at home. They lost by like 41 three weeks ago. That set a new standard. March 6th or they something. They blew past Didn't that last night. Didn't you comment on someone's tweet who said, they haven't lost this bad since two weeks ago. Yeah, it was a great tweet. <laughs> Kirthika uh, tweeted that out of TSN. Like, she's the best when it comes to Raptor stats. And yeah. She had a great tweet saying the Raptors lose by 44 points. Their worst loss at home in franchise history. They haven't lost by 40 at home since March 5th, 2024. <laughs> just a brilliant tweet because it's been three weeks and they just keep sinking and sinking and sinking. Yeah. And it's really tough to watch. And I don't know. Like, what are you supposed to do? Like, if you're if you're Darko, if you're the Raptors, you're tanking at this point. Yeah. You're trying Dude, to lose. You got exactly nine more games. It. And people have always said when somebody's going to hit the downturn, like, even with the Leafs, it's like there's been talk in the past. It's like, I don't know if the market can handle that or will take that. The market handles whatever you throw at it. If mm -hmm. you're brutal, you go and watch, and it's brutal, and you leave. What else are you going to do? Yeah, you don't have a choice. With, no. You, you, you have to live with it. I just – I tuned in. I was telling you off air, Brian, like, I don't recognize names. No, that's it's... where it's – like, when you're starting to have to dig deep yeah. and Googling people and going, like, that's when it's concerning. There – I would guess – this has probably not happened a lot in franchise history. Nobody played last night. Maybe Grady Dick. But I, I I mean, maybe there's Gary Trent's been playing. But how many jerseys would be represented in the stadium of players that are actually on the field of play? Not a lot. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. usually, obviously, if Scotty's playing, there's a lot of Barnes jerseys. Right, right. Um, you know, there were a lot of Siakam jerseys, a lot of Ananobi, Van Vliet, Lowry's everywhere when he was here. Kawhi, when he showed up, there was number two all over the city. Yeah. It is to a point where it's so deep into the injuries and so deep into the season that there may not be a jersey representing a player who's on the court that night, like actually registering and playing minutes. Yeah. That's really tough to do in pro sports. That is. Like, like really tough to do. Yeah, you know Grady what I'm saying? Dick. Like, somebody bought probably Grady, Grady Dick, Dick yeah, and, and Gary one. Trent. And, but yeah, there's probably Trent jerseys out there, but not, it's thin. Not deeper than it's that. Yeah. yeah, there's no Garrett Temple jerseys kicking around. <laughs> you know, like, like even again, Marner's not playing tonight. Riley's out. Matthews is a game time decision, but there will be Tavares and Nylander jerseys. Yes, of course. I, I guarantee it. Man jerseys. Like people are. You know, you think there's Bobby on. McMahon's? I think there are. Like yeah. I would love. And to hockey see noodles. They buy yeah. like they buy like the small guy jersey. They yeah. buy the third liner jersey. Maybe it maybe it's only in Toronto. But I think in the NBA they go into that jersey shop and they're like, no, nah, I'm not buying that. No, like that. <laughs> I, I'm not doing it. I would argue that somebody. And I would love to see it. I want proof. Somebody send me that they have a Bobby McMahon jersey. Because I do believe, again, they're not flying off the shelves. But in hockey, it might be other sports too. I don't know. NFL, is, is somebody wearing like a line, you know, a lineman yeah, jersey? Yeah, I don't like, think like left guards. Even, yeah. Are they available at the NFL We'd shop? You have to ask Luke, like, what would be the most obscure like, because kickers probably get a little bit of love. Who's buying a kicker jersey unless you're doing it ironically? <laughs> like, if you're doing it I as, like, know. okay, I lost my fantasy, so I had to buy a kicker's jersey. I grew up in Edmonton. I remember seeing Dave Cutler jerseys. And Dave Cutler was the kicker. Dave Cutler. 
He was, was he the there for 15 years? He was. He See, was so that's legend. different. If he's a legend in the community, does right. a lot for the city, charity, people. Hank Olisic, like, the other guy. was Hank Olisic was the, the uh, uh, free kicker, and yeah. the place kicker was Dave Cutler. I can't imagine there's a large marketplace for a kicker's jersey. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like I haven't I'm not jersey guy. I'm, I'm not, not so either, I don't so I like if you're stalking the if you're stalking the shop haze, the you know the Maple Leaf Square or, or whatever, sports, like how or many whatever, yeah. if you were doing it for a football team and you were stalking the jerseys, how many if you were the boss, would you say you better have this many of the kicker? There, well, there, it can't be any. I mean, that's an online purchase, right? That, that's where I would I would allow. So my you staff. just have his name tag with a little note underneath saying go online. go online and you can personalize it. Like instead, you, you they do that in the NFL a lot. There's so many players. You're talking right. a 53 yeah, man maybe, roster, yeah. Where it is possible for you to go to NFL shop or whatever, and you, you can do your own personal one. You can do a Hayes jersey, McLennan jersey. They're, right. they're obviously on top of it because there are certain things you can't do. They won't allow you to put something, right? You know, swear words in there Greatest, or whatever. Yeah. But I think that's what they would do. They would direct if you walked into the NFL shop, you know, wherever, and you asked for the kicker's jersey, they'd say. You have to go online, I, and you're wasting my time. I went online at Christmas. I told you this. My son loves football. He's six, and his favorite team is the Chargers. So he's like, I want a Justin Herbert. Herbert, jersey. see, that would be big. Herbert you could get. Yeah, but I'm not up here necessarily. Yeah, yeah, so no, I had to I go to nflshop.com or yeah, .ca, yeah, yeah. order this thing, and it came. He yeah. was fired up about it. But I, I was, it was the most random ask I'd ever received in my life. Like that was out of left field. He like, likes like the Josh Chargers. Allen, do you want you know? Like, you got to get him off that. He's young enough where you can manipulate him away from the Chargers. I, he wanted, They've never won anything. They <laughs> they always choke. They break people's hearts. <laughs> well, I you got to get him off. I the have Chargers. no idea how he even came up with that. He might forget that guy's name in a year from now. Who knows? Herbert's, Herbert's not going anywhere. He's a good player. He's a really good player. But it was just a random ask that I had to you know I had to get out ahead of it. Yeah, it took me. Three weeks for that to arrive at the house. Yeah, that'll take some time. But that'll it, take it some came. time. It came. Yeah, I want to see Bobby McMahon jerseys. I, I guess yeah. someone tweeted in there was an O'Neill jersey walking around Muskoka today. I saw that guy. He That's looked like he just had a six pack somewhere. <laughs> He's going across. The, I don't know where that. Guy's stumbling going. across the highway yeah, or what? I, love like, it, I don't man. know what is up with that guy. Where are you heading and what were you just doing? That's I don't love it though. That's outstanding. It's warm enough to wear that. You know, like it's not. Snowing or anything or raining, it, it looks perfect. Yeah, you nice can pull that off. Stroll. Yeah, you can pull it off. That's the beauty of this type of weather. We transition into the heat. Like what yeah. before, it can it can happen quickly. Like we could be a month away from 20, 25 degrees where you're not right. wearing that. Sometimes you have like a two week stretch where it's just a hoodie, just a quarter zip, just a jersey. You can pull off. Yeah, and be comfortable. So um, anyway, the Raptors uh, obviously it was a disaster. Robert tweeting and saying there'd be a lot of Justin Tucker jerseys down in Baltimore. That's probably true. Like, that's the best kicker in football. He's one of the faces of the team. Right. But generally, like, you go down to a Leaf game, you, you, you're you always going to have access to Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Tavares, Riley. Yeah. Beyond that, you, you might find some scattered like players. like goalies, so maybe the goalies. There's probably like, goalies, but there's not a defined wall. number one. Like, the, it, it, there would be, when, like, Cujo was here, yes. there would be Joseph Jersey, Pod fan, Eddie Belfort, for sure. If you have a tandem i think it's more difficult and the same thing with the jays if you go down to the jays shop there's guerrero and bichette and springer there was manoa all over the place in the past yes, i would guess was. you can't buy a manoa jersey at the park right now i think you can i don't It'd think on a back shelf why would it? they have manoa in there he's not even on the team i mean he's he's on the il but he's not i, I th that'd be a really interesting question like someone are take they a vid them? someone send in a vid the next time they're there for the first home game is yeah. there a manoa jersey i in feel there? like that would like there's always even players and former players or guys in the system, they're kind of on a different rack. Like it's like in the oh, back, thirty yeah. percent off rack, whatever. Mm -hmm. People always will take a shot at me, take a picture, it's like, <laughs> "Hey, I saw you on the bar yeah. bargain bin or whatever." Yeah, you're right. Well, I'm not on the team. I don't play for them. I saw that a couple of years ago. To give you an example, of that Hyunjin Ryu is a perfect example because when Ryu got here, remember it was a COVID year, yeah. so he didn't even pitch in Toronto, but hugely popular signing. Very symbolic signing. Like they, yeah. I think that was a Boris guy too. It was a Boris client, I believe. Four years, eighty million, lots of money. He came in, was nominated for the Cy Young that first year. Was unreal. Yeah, it was great. Then he slowly faded down the list of 
you know, starters. It wasn't, he wasn't the <laughs> ace anymore. And he was kind of middle of the pack. And then I think he got injured. And I remember I was at the park probably two years ago and there were Ryu jerseys everywhere because they had loaded up on Ryu. Like, oh, they must have paraphernalia because so many people were like, Ryu, 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 yeah, he's yeah. here. It's a big signing. And then because of COVID, I guess they couldn't sell them. And then they, they made them available, but no one was buying them because by that point, it was like, I don't want to, I'm not into this anymore. Yeah. You know, like Ryu's not my guy. I'm not. So they had I'm them on sale. Oh, they were, were them everywhere, right. everywhere. They're, they're selling them like hot dogs up and down <laughs> the aisle. Who wants a Ryu jersey? Who's buying? Who's selling? Wow. Anyway, uh, Leafs caps tonight. We've got Ovi in town. We'll track the Jays, obviously, down at the Trop. I don't think there's one person in the upper seat, like in the upper deck. Like, you know, everywhere else in the in baseball, it's a sold-out park. Naturally, Great, day like one. First day. I went to Expo's home opener, sold out. Next day, 4,000. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's the, the Jays will be the same thing. They'll have 40,000, and then they'll go down to 27,000 or something game two, whatever it's going to be. You know, you, you shouldn't completely drop off, ideally, but there's always a drop off after day one. The Trop's going to have... They'll have 9,000 people there today. Crazy, and because they've been so good. Every year they're good. Every year. And every year it's the same story. It's like, oh, I'm not buying Tampa. I think this is the year they fall off. No, they'll win 93 games. Yeah, They'll they... make the playoffs. It'll be a lock. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll track that. But as for the Leaf game tonight, again, Matthews is a game-time decision uh, due to illness. Sounds like he'll play based on what they were doing with the lines, you know, in the pregame skate. But we were talking about this early in the week. There is so much illness coursing through this team. I swear he's league. missed games no. already this year because of illness, or at least was a game time decision multiple times. Ended up playing. Yeah, I feel but. like it's this time of year. I mean, my my kids have been sick. Like everyone's been, you know, fighting stuff. It's kind of right in in winter, and then as the the seasons turn, it's that next time again. Get it out of the way now. Like that's the but way I feel. They gotta like. be. They gotta. They gotta. I know they're not struggling right now. Like they. They but didn't the, like their game the other night. Tampa they lost to won Carolina. Last night. But Tampa won again last night. Tampa's two points back. I saw you on Jay. Everyone's got a different opinion on what should happen. I. I think yeah. if you're. I, I don't quite understand that if you're a Leaf fan, why you're even thinking about who they're playing. I am hyper focused on the Leafs and what they represent and what they're gonna do. Uh, regardless of what the matchup is, Boston, totally Florida, agree, New York, man. Carolina, they're all really good teams. They're starting on the road. They will be underdogs on FanDuel and everywhere else, but they have to control it. They have to have a mojo. They have to have an attitude. And this idea that, and I understand it comes with fandom, but for me, I'm not focused on it whatsoever. I do not care who they play. Well, that's kind of what I, I said. I don't like, care who they play. I, uh, the only thing it's I on said the is... the Leafs to beat whoever they play. I, and there's agreed. no excuses regardless of, the, of whatever the scenario is or whatever the, the jigsaw puzzle is going to be to get to the end. It's on them. It's been eight years now. Go out there. I don't care who it is. You got to win. I, I agree. But my whole thing is, like, maybe it is just nice to have something different to look at. Like instead of going, oh, it's Boston again, or sure. hey, it's Tampa. It's the Rangers. That would be cool. But, that but, would be cool. But, but not again, because it's, it's easier. No, no, no. That and that, I didn't. Even, I don't think I said that. I think it's more just. No, I know. But other a, people are, I think, suggesting. Well, that. I don't. They've think... already done the easier guys. They did it last exactly. year when fans were chanting, "We want Florida," and they got them, but, and they got dummies. And how about Montreal in the for? bubble? Yeah. That was yeah. easy. And look what happened. Careful what you wish for, because if you think crossing over and the Rangers and Carolina are easier than Boston and Florida. Florida, those two, the Rangers have a hundred points. They're leading the National Hockey League. Like that's not a that's not a cakewalk. Like it just my whole thing is it's something different. No, listen, but that's I, not. I, I'll concede that. I could that argue that different. I could argue that if we did the FanDuel odds, all four teams that they might face, they might be the underdog. Absolutely, oh, they, they will be. I don't think there's any disputing that unless some major injury takes place between now and opening night. For the opponent. Right. You know, like Pasternak a, and Swayman go down. Okay, but, 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 but Sturkin. But Sturkin or, but you know, assuming Carolina. health across the board, Aho, you know. they, they will undoubtedly be a dog. But It but, shouldn't be substantial, but they'll be an underdog, of course. Yeah, if, even if it's 55-45 type of thing. But that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, careful what you wish for if you're thinking that. I only thought I would like it from a different dynamic. Plus, hey, you know, New York is New York. Like, oh, yeah. You know, Listen, Carolina, oh, you have history there. Like, it's just something different other than, hey, here we go with Florida. Here we go with Boston. Chances are it's going to be Boston or Florida. That's real. The realist, real thing is it's probably going to be one of those two. But there is a chance now that Tampa's creeping. Well, they're two they might... points back and they play them twice. Yeah. Like, they, the Tampa wins both those games in regulation. The Leafs are, are yeah. statistically in a position where they're 
they're going to probably cross over. But it's also, even if you're the, the first wild card, it may still stay in the Atlantic. Yeah, because Boston right. may beat New York, you know, or Florida may beat New York in terms of the, you know, what happens in the final eight to ten games yeah. for both teams, because there is going to be a jockeying of position in terms of who actually wins the conference. Um, you know, like that. That's I guess that would be the way it would play out right now, anyway. Yeah. Right. Is is Washington would play New York, and the Leafs would still play Boston. Yeah. Like if they were the first wild card, so it it may not matter in the end. Uh, and I, I'm with you. I, that that's a different conversation. The idea that it's it, it would have a different complexion, different players involved. Like the idea of wrapping your head around New York as opposed to knowing everything about Boston, knowing everything about right. like you, Florida, I, I think would be very compelling, especially with what we do. But And it may be an easier path. May mentally, maybe mentally the Leafs would not have the same demons. I do think there are demons with Boston. I don't think nearly as much with Florida. I know what happened last year. That's one round. Right. Boston, there's demons. Like right. Matthews and, and Marner and them, have lost in that building multiple times game seven. Right. Um, we know what happened in 13. I know there's still no players who represent that team, but still it hangs over the fan base and the team, uh, I believe. But I guess I'm just saying, like, I, I think if you're the Leafs, you you need to just – there's no excuses regardless of who you play. Like, yeah. even with you being a quote-unquote underdog, you've played the, the cards of being the favorite, of being the underdog, of having home ice. They had home ice last year, and they, they pissed it away against – Florida. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't matter who they play. It's got to be completely 100% on how they're going to approach it. And the, the possible concern here is with the amount of injuries and illness and all that, they just have, they seem to have no consistency with their lineup. Well, that, and, and that is getting to a point. It's not quite there yet. We still have a few weeks, but it's getting to a point where it's Edmondson's out. Riley's out. Now Matthews might not play. Marner's been out for weeks. You like, mean consistency with the guys that are going in it? Who or is guys? playing? Like exactly. yeah. Who are your twelve forwards and who are your six defensemen? Who's playing? I, Who's I think, playing in net? I don't. I don't think we have an answer on any of that. I think the the forwards can sort out because you have kind of the top six that you, you know, if they're healthy, mix and match all all of that, even top nine. The D are a concern for me because you have two new guys plugging in that you're going to play Labushkin and Edmondson. It, like those are guys that you have to find. They have to find chemistry with their partners, and that doesn't take like hey three games. It it it's probably going to at this. Well, point, well I'm though. saying I would like a little bit more here. I'd like to turn the corner in the last ten games. They're like okay, we've got two and a half weeks here, and we're going to play the hell out of you two as a partner because this is what we believe heading into the playoffs. That's what I'd like to see. I agree, but it's not likely to happen because. Yeah. You know, Edmonds, I mean, it could. Edmondson's out, I think, for the rest of the week. They'll still have seven or eight games left after that. But Labushkin missed a number of games due to illness. And um, Marner, I think, will return next week. Look good in practice. What, yeah, he's getting close. One. Like, I don't think it's a concern that this thing's going to linger. And it doesn't sound like the Riley issue is either. It's an upper body that he he's not playing tonight. He maybe won't play on Saturday. And then there's no reason to be concerned the rest of the way. Um so, you know, it's just about marrying load management with also a bit of edge and consistency. Like, it's all, they're all trying to make sense of it all where Keith's not happy with the way they're performing at times, yet you don't want to drive guys into the ground. Right. You want to find some consistency. Joseph Wall's in net tonight. He's got an opportunity to redeem himself for the way he played the other night. What is the message from the goalie? I mentioned it yesterday, but Samson asked, like, is he trying to say, like, I should be? He's like, I'm ready now. Like, I. Yeah, well, is he you, trying to float the point out that he's pissed? I, I kind of get I like the the idea of a guy not being happy that he's not playing, but it's like, oh, you're ready now? You're ready right now. Yeah. I don't – like, is he trying to say something that I'm a, unaware of here or he just wants to play? I would guess he just wants to play, but this is his, you know, third game in a row where he's not going. Well, And you knew he wasn't playing against Carolina. That wasn't going to happen, but I would have assumed he was playing tonight. came out of the game tonight. the other night. That's the thing. You came out of the game the other night, so – there obviously was some form of an injury, other than yeah. uh, unless it was cramping. and noodles. He just didn't come out. He looked like he was serious. Like he well, limped off the ice. Where it's was... like, oh boy, is he even going to come back? Right. Like I, I had a history of cramping. Like I had hydration issues as a player. So I, I, I was thinking, if this guy cramped up, then then fine. You're you're fine the next day. Two days later, it sounds like he banked. Yeah, I don't think it's a, a cramp. Post or something yeah. like that had a contusion. Yeah. So I can understand him not going last game. And I do understand 
Sheldon takes a shot at some players and says, I didn't like Joseph Wall's game. Here's a challenge. Go out and play better tonight. Yeah, I like that. I don't mind that. I don't mind. Like, this is the one thing that, you know, we always are over hypersensitive. Oh, you can't. Yes, you can. Like, you don't have to. He, Sheldon's not John Tortorella who sh- shoots from the hip and, and is yelling and screaming, but Torts has a vision for what he wants to do. But Sheldon's not far f- behind. Like, he yells on the bench. Like, oh, MJ yeah, always fiery, talks man. about, you know, how he's fired up and he's fiery and he challenges his guys, but a lot of that isn't public. He's just made it public a little bit, maybe more this year than he has in past years. Because in past years, I feel like anything that went public, he had to walk it back two days later to make sure everyone was fine with it. Yeah, that has come to an end, which was long overdue. It never should have happened to begin with. The walking back comments that were completely open and honest. and was insane. Yeah, like, listen, there are times where he said stuff, like the the respect and the handshake line, that's what you walk back. Yeah. but That's That's the one you come back and say, I have no idea what I was thinking with that. (laughs) I never should have said that. Yeah, Um, never. Yeah, but criticizing players that deserve to be criticized, there's nothing wrong with that, and I think he's... You know, he's he's taken off that shield. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is a big game again. It's a big game for Washington, too. They they have to compile points. Yeah. Detroit's in Carolina tonight. That's a tough game for them, but they're, they're chasing down Washington. Philly's playing tonight. Philly's in a position where they're trying to hold off Washington for that three seat. So you, you got the Caps in town. You got Ovechkin in town. Craig Laughlin, analyst for the Caps, will join us a little bit later this hour. Ray Ferraro coming up today. Ray will join us. We've got our heart vote, too. Yes. Our five-pack for the heart. The finale here. Woo. This is really substantial stuff. We even have a little X-Factor possible decision tiebreaker. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't know exactly what that is. Do you want to describe what you're thinking? Is that taking it to social well, media? I just want to what put do you want some... to do here? No, no, There's I an just... issue. I just want to put something out there where noodles, if we have that tiebreaker pick where you just want to give someone a sniff, it could be just something to pull noodles in a certain direction where, and I got a really good feeling today. I know you guys are in there. You probably chatted for an hour before the show. (laughs) Hayes, you probably revealed your list. I have not seen any list. You guys are probably real tight right now, really tight as far as friendship because it's Hayes 2, O-Dog 1. Mm Mm-hmm. And today is worth a two pack. I don't think it's worth a two pack. I no, it is. It no, it be is noodles. Because pack. if I would no. two pack, we're doing a two no. pack. I, I, well, no, it's worth two points. No, because if I win, I win everything. Yeah. yeah but I, what I'm saying is, I believe it should be worth one. And if you happen to win, then we will have a tiebreaker. If Hayes happens to win, then he just wins outright. Right. So that's the way I feel. Is it? It should be consistent with the other ones. But, oh, if you have a great list today, which you say you do, and you tie it up, let's find a tie, tiebreaker. Maybe a there's group. maybe there's trivia or something there's like trivia, that. Maybe there's, there's a Dear else. Hazy B spin to this, right? Like, who gives the best advice for Dear Hazy B, which is coming there's up something at 6 All I'm going to ask today, Noodles, I yep. think one of the factors in these lists is the delivery and the broadcasting element. Because I thought I brought the heat yesterday. The presentation I, was good. Presentation was. doesn't really matter. I Dude, mean, it what does, matters is This is a broadcasting show, a pro show. <laughs> I know, but listen, you've... If you shine up a turd, it's still a turd. You know what I mean? You, you're like, you've yeah. got to have the presentation is going to be good. <laughs> but we're talking about great players. How could we be shining up that? Like the Vesna vote. It, you're like, right. Hellebuck is... Poor verbiage. I apologize. But yeah. it's you, you can't, you know, new paint job on a, a topaz is I still a topaz. Okay. Like, you know, you want a Lamborghini. That's what I'm saying. All right. We'll bring Lamborghini levels of production and broadcasting okay yes so that's that's coming up ray ferrara today pierre lebrun today uh we're looking back on what happened with the raptors last night leafs caps tonight there's a lot of big games in the nhl and opening day around baseball we're tracking that of course as well overdrive continues tsn 1050 and on tsn4 overdrive continues brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score leafs caps tonight craig laughlin will join us former leaf Capitals analyst on Alex Ovechkin, who's been red hot in the second half. Ovi has been red hot in the second Mm -hmm. half. Oh, you called it. Oh, called it. Because we were saying that would he sign off on what? Didn't we say 16 goals for the season? Something stupid like that. By the way, do you see Ovi's high energy prep getting on the bird? 
With this the guy Cheetos? gets on the bird with a double crab Subway sandwich and a bag of Cheetos and gray hair and has the most is going to have the most goals of all time. I love that, man. I love I that. I do, too. He just said, you know what? I don't care. Look at this guy. I'm getting on the bird, and I've got my Cheetos and my double crab sub, and let's go win. Look at the jacket he's got on, too. It's like a yeah. blue... Like with red peppered in, or pink Dude, in like a he pink wa- shirt. He was walking into the, the rink the last time they played the Leafs. His shirt was untucked. He ripped his tie off. He had no socks on. I love that. It was just like a guy that just wanted to get to work. I don't want to wear the suit. I have to. And he looked old school, man. Yeah. Duncan Keith was the same thing. Yeah. These guys are walking in now with their Gucci sneakers on. They're all shined up in white. I can't stand that, by the way. I want the guys to look nice, and they should feel con- – just wear some dress shoes. It feels more professional walking into the rink. But it, Duncan Keith used to just – his tie would be on the side. His jacket was a mess. It looked mm-hmm. like he got it at – some garbage shop and he just said i'm gonna go be the best defenseman on the ice yeah, yeah. there were guys i got that, an appreciation for that there were guys that ha- would have a two thousand dollar suit on and they still look like they crawled out of a dumpster mm-hmm. and other guys that just put together that's just how they are like i i played with a bunch of them marty reasoner marty the one man party he had he would have a two thousand dollar suit on he'd look like he just <laughs> you, you woke him up in his back seat yeah. to come play hockey that's just how he was like yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> it's just a completely <laughs> That's different Obi, world though. pro sports. Like Ray always says it. Ray has this saying, the p- guy looks like an unmade bed. That's what Ovi looks like. Yeah. But, man, he could score. Hey, what he is he at, 26 goals. now? Uh, yeah, he's he's on fire. Like in the second half, he's it's like him and Matthews and Hyman. Like he's right there in terms of like leading the league in terms of the last month, month and a half wow. anyway. He's had an incredible resurgence. If he hits 30 on the year, that is, uh, that's amazing. That'll be 19 years in a row where it's 30 plus. That's crazy. 19 seasons in a row with 30 plus. And of the 19, I think 14 or 15 of them would be 40 plus. Yeah. And how many, seven or eight would be 50 plus. It's uh, amazing. And he's still a, a big draw. You know, I don't know where he would rank anymore in terms of, must see, like must be live in the building. He and Sid have probably fallen further down the list. It's McDavid that would be number one now. I think McKinnon would be high on that list. Colorado for sure. We had a conversation. I'm looking back at it now. 2016, 2017, he scored 33 goals that year. And I remember us talking on our show going, like, are we seeing the beginning of the end for Ovi? And we all would have said yes. And we all did. But we were saying he's still a draw, but, you know, like it's not, it doesn't look as good, not scoring. That was like eight years ago. And, and then he comes back. <laughs> that, like, it's insane. He, he, you know, 33, and then, you know, he's 51, 53. Like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. He went from 32. Was it you, Hazy B, that didn't have him on your top 50? Yes. I did not have him yes. on the top 50 this but year. But you had yeah. top 50 Dougie. You had top 50 Dougie. I had Dougie. top 50 that Dougie Hamilton. I still don't argument. think Ovi has been one of the 50 best players in the league this year. Second half, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, right. second half he has in terms of goal scoring, which is obviously more valuable than any other asset a player can have. But I don't think his all-around game is top 50 anymore. I think that I, I was ahead of the curve on that. None of you will have him in the top 50 next year. None of you. Well, what if he gets... 38 yeah, but you're year. projecting for next year. Like the, the 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 practice is what do you think will happen this season? Not who would not who has he been in the past. But what like if, Hyman's an interesting practice on that. He'll be in the top 50 next year. Naturally, yeah. he will be, and he, he likely will be a top 50 player next year. Right. But he he's gonna I think will come back. He'll down regress. Yeah. He'll regress a little bit. Yeah. Right? He might get 29 goals next year, and right. it might be a good season. And Sam Reinhardt might do the same thing. Like yes. Reinhardt will be number 18 on the list next year and have. 31 goals by the end of the year. And you'll be like, I'm not sure he was in the top 50. Right. But you have to, you have to agree that they, those rankings would be deserved next year. If they go, if they're that based high. on what you saw this year, you know, there, there's just, there are guys that come and go and Ovi is not that guy. Like for 15 years, Ovi was a lock top five player in the world. Right. Like a lock. And for years it was him and Sid that were jockeying for the top spot. Right. He is not that guy anymore. Even if he hits 30 goals, that's an incredible accomplishment for someone in their 19th season doesn't mean he's been one of the 50 most impactful players this year. Right. Here's what I'll say. 
So he's not in the top 50. In top 50, Dougie would be if he Here, stayed healthy. Here's a ch- there's a chance, though. Oh, if he ends up with 30-plus this year, I, I and this is a down year. What if he's like, okay, I'm going to follow it up. I'm going to train really hard. You think he summer. can get the engine going and get higher next year? You think I, he can I think if he gets to 30 or 35 and goes nuts here at the end, I think next year you have to factor him passing Gretzky as a part of your ranking, and I think it elevates him. That's where that's what I was. That's where I'm going. That's Look where at I, this guy shaking his head. He's a <laughs> hater. You are a hater. No, I'm you not are. a hater because he's going to need he's going to need like 40 next year. Yeah, which it is, is doable based on his history and who he is. But and if, I, I don't if, know, if that's man, the focus right from the drop of the puck. Where you've got Dylan Strom circling back on breakaways to find, you know, like, yeah. If that's the focus, it might be like if if the end is in sight for him or that that number, and it's somewhat achievable, he might go like, I'm going to give it all here. And yeah, then, well, I'm sure he will. It won't be at the start of the year though, right? You're starting from scratch. You'll still be like 40 goals away from it, right? Once you get inside 10, then it's really going to be hyper focused. Right. But I would think. The, the attention to Ovechkin should be now on the back burner a little bit because they're in a playoff spot. It's true. Right? Like, why is it still all about Ovi? And I don't know if it necessarily is. I don't think they're sitting in the room like, let's get 8-1 tonight, guys. Make yeah. sure Ovi gets on the game sheet. Like, that's I, an that, incredible that's not... turnaround, too, Brian. Watching them at the beginning of the year, yeah. they were horrendous the first 10 games. They looked like, old and slow. Yeah, they, they did. Looked. They didn't look like they knew what they were doing. And now they've got some confidence. They believe in themselves. You can hear the coach in his speeches after the game. It's a completely different team out there. And the yeah. goalies played, like, it's not Kemper. It's Charlie Lindgren who's played really, really well for them. And I, I had thought about Vez, but it's I don't know if he's played enough or – I mean, he's dragged this team or helped this team into a playoff. Yeah, we always battle. talk about their goal differential, right? Yeah. Like they're minus 26 and they're in a playoff spot, uh, yeah. which is incredible. But uh, they're in town tonight. Tom Wilson's back home, but he won't be playing. Yeah. You know, t- last time we saw Tom, he was high sticking people and got yeah. suspended. But he is from Toronto. I'm sure he's up here with the team. Ananobi came up last night and wasn't playing. I think yeah. the Knicks were like, why are you up here? Anyway, let's head down to the rink. Here's. Uh, Former NHLer, former Leaf, Caps TV color analyst. Here's Craig Laughlin. How you doing, Craig? Hey, great. That wasn't a high stick, was it? Um, <laughs> they're still reviewing it, I think. <laughs> How you doing, boys? I love your show. I'm finally on. Yes, we, we love having you on. Thank you for doing this. I mean, we were just talking about, you know, Ovi and him just being on fire down the stretch here. Like, what do you make of it when you compare to where he was earlier in the year where he just he could not get on the sheet, he could not score enough goals to really feel like this chase was alive. And the last six weeks, the guy's on fire. What's going on with Ovechkin? That's a big change of turnaround. That's for sure, fellas. I think when you look at it, you know, he had that stretch there where he was getting chances and shots, and he just wasn't finding his wheelhouse or his shot. And to me, it was because he wasn't moving, to be honest with you. He was not moving the way he has to move and has been moving the last 20 or 30 games where he's been a total difference maker you know eight goals his first 43 games overall and we were like "Uh uh-oh the power play was sinking he wasn't getting his looks the pucks were in his feet he wasn't moving to reset into his one-timer position and all of a sudden he scores a goal and i you know we all talk about it. it was the dallas game where one went off his leg or something we tied it up late and then he rode the camels in Dubai, and I call it the camel effect, and all of a sudden he came home and he has been one of the hottest caps and the hottest scores in the mm-hmm. NHL, and to me, he loves this time of year, guy. You just, guys, you just see it when he walks up into practice, walks into the game. He's bubbly. He's energetic. He just looks like a totally changed player on the ice, and I think this type time of season really pumps him up, and to me, he's playing his best hockey right now for us, so that's a good thing. Greg, how concerned were you at the beginning of the year? I I think you were listening. We were talking at the beginning of the season. The first 10 games, it looked like Carberry was really in one, and the team wasn't performing, and it just looked like it was going to be a mess. How impressive is the turnaround? And you must be pleasantly surprised to see it. Very, very surprised. You know, at the start of the season, we were excited. I, I think when you look at the start of the season, what I was excited for more than anything was I thought Nick Backstrom's coming back. He looked good in camp, guys. And all of a sudden then, 
our centers lined up nicely, which in this day and age, you need those pivots to be strong. We had Kuzi, we had Backstrom, we had Strom, and we had Dowd. And I looked at that in training camp, and I said, you know what? That's pretty good with Backstrom returning. That can handle some of the rigors in the National Hockey League and the other big centermen. They can create some offense. Then Kuzi has his issues. Backstrom is on the sideline. Now we have to rely on Dylan Strom who's been fantastic. So I was worried that they were even going to get in the playoffs. Then all of a sudden, you know what happened is the fact that Carberry came in. He totally wanted to change the systems. He wanted the first things out of his mouth in training camp. We got to play more pace, more speed, all the things that everyone says, the caps are slow. They want to do this. They want to do that. And all of a sudden to me, it's taken this long, just about. And plus the mix in the locker room guys has changed drastically. When you look at the young guys, they are so excited, number one, to be playing this time of year, number two, playing for the Caps. You know, you look at Miros Nishenko, we thought he was going to be in Hershey all year. He comes up, he's playing great, he's 20 years old. You have LaPierre, you have Connor McMichael. To me, that brings life and excitement into the locker room, plus the speed. So I think finally for Carberry and his team, it sort of sunk in how he wants them to play. They changed the D zone, you know, they went from – just about a zone to a man-on-man, which is totally different than what they had under Laviolette. So there's been a lot of changes along the way. So I give credit to Carberry and his troops sticking with it, including the power play, which has really helped us win games recently here. Rasmus Sandin, it's his first game back as a a former Toronto Maple Leaf. How has he settled in, and what does his game look, look like right now? His game's solid. I think everyone's craving more offense from Rasmus. He's playing top four minutes. He's second to John Carlson in that category. To me, for the way he moves and everything, he's a good fit for us because we want to get the puck going north as fast as possible. And I think Rasmus has fit in. He's really enjoyed the time in the city so far. It's a great town to live in and be part of. And I just think he's excited. I think he's no top three on our team for years to come. The way he plays, the way he can move the puck, he's not the biggest guy, but man-on-man, there was a game the other night where he followed around a guy in the own zone, and the only way you could do that is you could skate, and he was skating extremely well. Uh, We're excited to have him, and the type of minutes he's putting up over 21 a night has been impressive for him. Craig, we touched on Ovi off the top. Is it difficult not to think of you know, him passing Gretzky and what that will look like. And when he ultimately does do that, do you just think he walks in the locker room in Ovi fashion and takes his gear off and that's game over? Or what do you think happens? Ah, he's got a couple more years left here on the deal. I I think he wants to obviously finish and watch. I think he's still got more. I think he's one of these guys, to be honest with you, that can play over 40. He just has the size, the strength. Now he's moving better than he did earlier on this season. I'm excited for it at the start of the year. I was worried when he went through that long extended slump to start. I was like, oh my God, he may not catch Gretzky and pass him. But now I'm looking at it. The power play has drastically changed. So how he's getting more looks now and he's getting different looks than just in his office. He's getting shots from the middle of the ice. Now he's getting shots from the right side. He's getting shots from the left side. So they've had to take away some of the habits that he had to create more opportunities for him. So right now with 47 or so to pass Gretz, I really think he's going to do it. I think this year he can easily get 30. So now we're talking about 40, 45 goals more to pass him, and he's got two more years left on his contract. I think he could just play power play, guys, and get those 40 goals and get the all-time record. I'm excited for it. It would be great for the game. Yeah, it's certainly moving in that direction, and Leaf fans excited to see Ovi in town. Um, it's going to be a fun one tonight, Craig. Enjoy it. We really appreciate you doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Great show, guys. Love it all the time. Thank we appreciate you. that. Thanks, Thank you, Craig Laughlin, former Leaf. Maybe we'll have his alumni jacket on tonight, Why bombing not? around. I should call in the game in between periods. You might be able to slide down for a little penne pesto. Great call. I would great, think. great call. Roll down there. Yeah. See, we haven't just, even had it the second time, have we? It's only happened yeah. once, and it's gotten to the point now where I don't even know if I want to have it again because the bar was the, set so. Yeah, like I have this impression of the greatest <clears throat> pasta dish ever. What if it's ever a bad batch? Created. Then you're so disappointed. Exactly. Then it changes everything. You got to be careful with your lasagna too. That's 
Because you, what I'm saying, you, man. You know what? You're like Seinfeld in the race. I I don't want to race again. Yeah, like that's I right. Choose that's not why, to bake. That's why I feel like you don't want to take on Kara and anybody else that's been taking shots at you. It's yeah, like, maybe you, we just keep the lasagna to ourselves. That's right. Because we because we know, and it's like, why let other people try to ruin what we know? I don't know the lasagna. I feel like you should put it out there. Well, there's only so much I can make. I mean, I'm not running like a soup no, kitchen I'm, here. I'm talking. <laughs> How many you make a big batch? Am I going to make? And you have Kara come in, and then you have who else had taken shots? Everybody has. Tessa, Sophie Coolia, Sophie, Sophie did. Cool. Yeah, so Tessa. Sophie brings in hers. Yeah. Tessa bring like there's a five. Joe pack. from the bridge won't well, stop sending no, me pictures. Joe from the bridge doesn't cook. <laughs> That's the thing. Joe from the it's bridge the is the people useless. around him that cook. Completely so useless. He can't, he can't bring anything. It doesn't in. count exactly. No. You can't bring in your just because your you're skilled at the microwave warming things up. Right. Doesn't make you a cook. Yeah, you're disqualified. I agree. Yeah, you you have to be the one actually getting into the trenches. Yes. You need to be in the trench, firing up lasagna, or else I have no time for you. Yeah. And I don't want to hear about your favorite because it's irrelevant to me. Joe from the bridge. It's his Nona's that's yeah. his favorite, or his wife's. It's not his. Of course. Now, is your lasagna Aaron's favorite? I'm not going to get into this. It's, it's been established as mine, all right? And I make it, and I bring it in, all right? So that is what is going to be clarified right here, right now. Maybe Aaron helps out, though. Well, Maybe she might chip you in. You just sprung a leak there. She yeah. made it, didn't she? No, You're I was, fraud, it's man. all me, man. It's all me. Don't you worry about it. I don't even want that in the atmosphere. Sprung a leak. I don't want that as a part of this conversation at all. I'm... I'm Listen, what what is it? Uh, what what's that thing that the guy slaps onto the uh, what's uh, flex seal? I need oh, some flex seal right now. Yeah, the flex seal. That's what I'm looking for is flex seal to put an end to that leak. It's yeah. all mine. It's all I'm yours. in the kitchen. My ingredients, and that'll Fair. be the end of that conversation. Wrong with that. <laughs> all right, Ray's coming up. Ray Ferraro in about 20 minutes. We will get to our heart discussion, our heart list. O versus myself. That's coming up. Later this afternoon as well. These caps tonight were teeing that up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. The word I was looking for for our ballots is there's going to be an honorable mention. And that could tip the vote one way or the other, depending on if we have the same guy or different guys. So you've got your five pack honorable mention. That's what I was trying to get to. Yeah. Okay. All that right. I, I know that that was being suggested internally. Maybe that puts something over the top, but it's still going to come down to noodles no, making I get the it. call one way I or get the it, other. but you got to have an honorable mention for your list, sure. Joe, for the bridge. If you don't have one, please forward it to him. I have one. I have a great one. Honorable I have mention. the best honorable mention. <clears throat> there you go. And I will say one thing about this list. I drilled down. I drilled down today. I'm talking, I spoke with analytics people. Scouts, general managers, and other people who vote. Okay. Well, that's what I'm up against. And I don't have access to those type of contacts, but I do I have know a you don't. Thing. That's why I used it to my advantage. Sure. My contact list dominates yours, and I went full <laughs> throttle, and I drilled down. All right. We'll see, man. I'm up 2-1 right now. And that's yeah, pretty good ultimately trade. the scoreboard that matters today. Um, you see this stuff? There was a, an NFL Network report. Uh, reporting that Woody Johnson, the owner of the Jets, got into some big blow-up with Robert Sala, the, the head coach of the Jets. Yeah. And Johnson went on Twitter refuting it, saying basically fake news, completely irresponsible of the NFL network. Right. And people are pointing out that he is a part owner of that network. Like, <laughs> the NFL owns the NFL network, and he's one of the 32 owners. So it's like, couldn't you just go... Figure that out yourself. Yeah. But it also speaks to how clouded it can get and complicated it can get for NFL Network journalists. Some of them are great. Ian Rappaport's great. Mike Garofalo's great. There's great, great insiders and reporters. Tom Pelissaro, I think, is on the NFL Network. But, like, how are you supposed to respond to that if an owner of a team is refuting a report via Twitter? And could you not do that privately and try to yeah. get to the bottom of that? Um, I don't think it's that guy's for with long Twitter, man. with the Jets, man. It just seems like there's been – I mean, he's had quarterback massive issues. You lose Aaron Rodgers, four snaps in. It's mm -hmm. a big – like everyone talks about, oh, they've got the defense. But it just seems like there's some weird things where it just doesn't seem like – he. if you want to go hot seat, I'll call him. He's on the hot seat. Yeah, Salah I think is too. Yeah, and, and he really has been dealt a horrible hand at the quarterback no position. No kidding. Like a horrible – Zach Wilson – 
Zach Wilson in four snaps for Aaron Rodgers. Like when Rodgers went down, everyone collectively understood it's over. The Jets are That's done. It. Their Curtains. season's finished. Curtains. Yeah, so it speaks to the magnitude of that position. But, you know, presuming Rodgers will return and be healthy, this is your platform now. Like yeah. this is it. If he's healthy and he's back and he's slinging it and looking good and you still don't win, he's done. Yeah. Like no question. And um, I just, you know, social media, it, it's completely changed everything again this is an owner of a football team refuting a report on a network that he partially owns it is um, weird it is pretty wild stuff <laughs> and i haven't seen if draymond has tweeted anything out today did i miss that doogie i don't know if he posted anything but you see he got kicked out of the game like four minutes in last night steph's was... had enough of that nonsense he's yeah. just like like he's like come on man need the guy to play whatever he has to he said you could tell by the look on his face after the game he's had enough yeah Steph yeah. I think in the moment he'd had enough like he kind of shielded his yeah. face at one point and I think he's just like I can't believe you're doing this to me they still won the game that was a big yeah. win against Orlando Raymond was waiting for him at the end I don't know if you saw well and he owned it like he yeah. has to but this guy has put himself in such a bad position so many times this year and you take two quick texts Four, not even four minutes into the game three minutes into the game yeah and you're out like that's just you, you would think the guy's 21 years old, 22 yeah. years old. He's been in the league for like 12 years. Yeah, he just plays like that, though. He'll never – no. not going to change. That's the thing. Well, that's become change. clear now. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, they needed wins. They need wins, and that was a significant one last night. But to, to remove yourself from the, from the game because you're yelling at the refs and get teched up twice, teed up twice, just so selfish, so stupid. Yeah. And I, I do think the body language on staff would suggest he's kind of at the end of the road for the whole thing. Yeah. His clay's yeah. going to go. Draymond might go. And, you know, who knows what it's going to look like this time next year in Golden State. Hour two coming up. Ray Ferraro will join us. Leafs caps tonight. We'll get to that next.